In this particular video, we are going to go through the creation of the circuit that would be required for the ECS2200 oscillator. In the process, what we would also learn is how to create a schematic part for your own if it is not available in the library that's already provided as part of ORCAD Capture CIS. So let us open up the ECS2200 circuit page. So the first things first, we need to fill out the title block. So ECS2200 circuit and this is document 3 and the revision for this one is 1. Okay. So now let us just simply assume that we do not have the ECS2200 part in the library. We can search for it though. Let's see ECS2200. No, the ECS2200 doesn't seem to be present in the library that is given. So in this case, we would have to create one of our own. So for that, what we do is we go back to the tree view. And in there, what we do is we go to file new and create a library. Now, in this particular library, you would see that it appears within the library folder. We right click on that library.olb which has been created and click on new part. So the name for this one, we can provide anything. So I know that it is the ECS2200 part name and then the frequency used is 12 megahertz. So I'll just name it as ECS2200 and 12 megahertz. So that's how I will name it. Now the parts reference prefix, there are certain standard ones. Now since this is a crystal oscillator, in general the reference prefix given to these things are X. So that is what I'll put in here. All of the other things would be default for most of the parts that we create. And do remember that this pin number should be visible always. If it is not checked by default, do check it. And once that is done, I'll hit an OK. When I do that, I'm given this page where I will be able to create the schematic symbol for my part. So for that, I'll have to refer to the data sheet. Now the ECS2200 data sheet is like this. If we look at that, we see that when viewed from the bottom, it has got four pins to which things can be done. Like you can connect to it or there can be no connects. And they are basically a tri-state, a case ground, an output, and 5-volt DC. And the pin numbers are a little bit odd, but then that's what it is. So 1, 4, 5, and 8. So we would keep referring back to that data sheet when we create the part. So the first thing is we create a rectangle that seems to indicate the box for the part. So place rectangle. We placed one that's big enough according to I estimation to hold all those pins. Once we are done with that, then see here there is a place pin. When you activate that, you can provide the name. So let's start off with the first one. The first one was tri-state. So we will have that. The pin number was 1. This one is a passive line because we do not know whether it serves as an input or an output. Basically, tri-state can be left unconnected, so we just put it as passive. The shape of the line can be quite a lot of different things, but the most popular is line. So do an OK, and then it comes over here and you can place it anywhere you like. So what we will do is we will go by the picture in the data sheet. So this is tri-state. Once that is done, we will end mode and then create the next pin. So let's see what that would be. That would be 4 and its name is case ground. So let's do that. The second pin, this is case. I'll shorten out the ground. The name of number of the pin is 4. It's a scalar pin, of course, as it's a single one. And this one is a power pin. And pin should be visible and OK. And I put it on this side. Now, as I do that, you can see that the letters get overlapped with each other. So what we can do is we can then resize the box. We can click on the box and, sorry, we can click on the box and then use one of these to drag it around so that there's enough separation between those two. Then we would go to the third pin, which is the output, but named as pin five. So this is named as output pin 5 and like we know the type should be output and OK and we place it in here 
and right and then there is the last one which I think is 5 volts bar so let's name it as 5 volts PDC and that again is power type pin visible and the number of that pin is 8 so we do an OK and then we place it here now once that is done we have the pins in place and don't do anything with this this X question mark the question mark is going to be filled by default when you introduce the part in your schematic but the value needs to be changed this would change to whatever the parts name is so in our case the ECS 2200 12 megahertz so we do an OK and that is our part now when you try to save the part for the first time you would again see that that default library folder open up and then it is asking you to name this particular library as something and save it so give it some name let us say let's name it as sample project library and save it once that is done we can go back to our schematic page open up this parts view and let us see if under the libraries we have the sample schematic or sample project library we don't see it so what we can do is we can again browse and see that it is there let us verify yes the sample project library is here so we select that as well as do a control A so that everything else is selected and do a open now if we start typing out the ECS then the name that we gave it was uh, 2200 C the part as we had named it is now available for you to use so when we select that we can put the part on our schematic page and if you see that X question mark since this is the first part on the page this has become X1 and the value is provided and if you put another one over here then when I place it you would see the X has become 2 so on and so forth uh, depending upon the number of parts that you place on the page so for this one let us quickly go through the connections for it so here is another thing whenever there's a particular pin which doesn't connect to anything always remember to put a no connect against it don't leave it hanging so I'll put a no connect against tri-state because I'm not going to connect it to anything then case ground would be connected to ground and 5 volts VCC would be connected to a power rail now when you place those things you can use this see a place bar when you do that there are a lot of ground symbols which you can choose and then there are a lot of VCC symbols you can choose so I choose the ground caps him and then do a OK and remember that on any particular schematic page the ground should always be at a lower level than the supply so once I'm done putting the ground let us put the supply what I'll do is I'll use the VCC capsim as well put it somewhere over here and I'll probably just for kicks name it as 5 volts right now time for connecting these together so again I'll choose the wire and then draw it through and connect it to the VDC notice one thing when and you would have a complete and correct connection uh, in that particular way so for the rest of it what we do is the output if you remember the circuit from video 1 this output is going to go in and connect to the clock generation IC so this is going to be an outbound from this page so again we place a port so we select that let's see what outbound ports do we have now this is an inbound one this is an outbound port so we select that and put it here and let's name it as XTAL out and then connect it using the wire so for now we are done with the clock part of things as well so we save it and in the next one we would see how we work with the uh, clock generation IC so on to the next one